Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. And welcome to this latest Chassis Sim tutorial. Well, I really wouldn't call today's tutorial a tutorial per se, but more a very, very interesting case study. And in particular, what we'll be talking about today is one of Chassis Sim's untold stories is how it's been used in World Time Attack Challenge that's hosted um, at um, Sydney's Eastern Creek Raceway every October. So let's get started because I guarantee you, you guys are in for a real treat today. The thing about World Time Attack Challenge is that it is the last bastions of technical freedom in our sport. Yes, the cars are colourful, but you'll have full techn uh, technical freedom. And what I mean by colourful is they truly are the long distant love child of the Batmobile and a drag queen in full dressed in full regalia for Mardi Gras. That being said, one of the great things about this is in an era that is absolutely and utterly dominated by very, very restrictive technical regulations throughout the whole of the motorsport uh, landscape. The great thing about Time Attack is, and World Time Attack Challenge in particular, is that you can pretty much do whatever you want. So consequently, it's been a great case study of CFD and vehicle simulation coming together. But more importantly, it's been one of these um, situations where I've actually had, uh, and it doesn't happen all that often, where I have a customer who will turn up to me and will tell me what he actually did. And I'll turn around and I'll go, really? Huh? Well, I never thought of that. And that particular customer was Andrew Brilliant of um, AMB Aero, who's been using chassis sim extensively um, in combining what um, in what he does uh, with CFT. So, Andrew, a big shout out to you, mate. And also, too, what we're going to be discussing here, I go into um, much. I'm going to be going into much greater depth in um, a forthcoming article that I've written for Race Car Engineering. So, if you're not subscribed to Race Car Engineering, um, this article is definitely worth subscribing to because I'll be, uh, be discussing this more in depth. So let's get started. Okay, first things first. For those of you who aren't familiar with Chassis Sim, the thing about Chassis Sim, it's got a large number of simulation toolboxes such as lap time simulation, shaker rig and track replay simulations to really nail down what your car is doing. It's used in, for, it's use, it's used in formulas as diverse as LMP1, P2, Open Wheeler, NASCAR, V8 Supercars and DTM. You can reverse engineer tyre and aero models from race data, and at its core is a full fire briefing, 21 state multi-body um, vehicle dynamic model. So here's an example of some of the inputs in the chassis sim and some of the outputs that you get. This is an overlay between actual and simulated data using the track replay. The first case study I want to talk about is uh, Nemo. Now Nemo was one. Uh, Nemo really was the first car that uh, uh, that Andrew really used chassis sim to nail down quite a few things that were going on, and in particular in terms of looking what he wanted to do with um, the CFD. The thing about Nemo is Nemo was one of these cars where the CFD played a very, very big part in defining what the downforce targets were going to be and what they should be um, looking at. It also was a pretty much of a watershed moment where chassis sim and CFD um, were used together for the first time. And in particular, what Chassis Sim was used for was to define an L on D target. And just remember, the thing about World Time Attack Challenge is just remember, what it revolves around is it revolves around taking a car and modifying, the, uh, and modifying it to the nth degree so you achieve the minimum possible lap time around a circuit. And the other thing to remember about World Time Attack Challenge is that it does have its origins um, in um, uh, street uh, in street drag races, he decided to go circuit racing. And really, the thing about Nemo was that Andrew was able to use Chassis Sim to articulate to the people who were running Nemo, hey, look, we're not just after straight speed here. The critical thing we need to chase is grip. And so we were able to. Uh, so Andrew was able to use Chassis Sim to demonstrate that, and more uh, and in particular to ascertain that what they wanted to do with this particular juncture for this particular design was chase maximum downforce. So as an example there, that's an example of an overlay between a low downforce configuration, which is colored, and the high downforce configuration, which was black. And you can see that particularly on the main straight, you've got literally a 24 kilometer, uh, you've, got, uh, you've got literally a, a 20 plus 
kilometer per hour difference in terms of uh, in terms of speed, actually close to about thirty k an hour difference. Yet, because of all the downforce, you can carry all the speed through the corners. So that leads to an absolute massive reduction um, in lap time. And this really was able to resolve, um, uh, put the question beyond any um, doubt as to which direction you needed to go, whether you were, wherever you wanted to minimize drag or whether you wanted to increase downforce for maximum grip. Now, again, for those of us famili uh, familiar who do this professionally, for who do this professionally in the upper levels such as P1, F1, et cetera, et cetera, I mean, you take something like this for granted, but for a category like this, that was actually a true light bulb moment. The other case study was the Scorch Rear Wheel Drive um, entry um, driven by um, Tomonohaki um, under uh, uh, um, Suzuki, um, Call 9 under Suzuki. And under Suzuki, if you're listening to this, buddy, a big shout out to you, my friend. The thing about uh, this particular thing, about this particular car, was because it was rear wheel drive. Um, using um, the simulated um, data from chassis sim, Andrew was in a position where he could really nail down the attitudes in which to focus um, his uh, 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 which to focus um, his CFD um, efforts on. Now, all of, now for those of you who have a nodding acquaintance with CFD, if you've used it more, for more than five minutes, you know it's incredibly computationally intensive. So, consequently, you need to chew uh, uh, like uh, uh, like with any good um, uh, uh, good rugby union player. You need to choose your moment when to go in very, very carefully. And the great thing about um, uh, using um, chassis sim was Andrew was able to do um, just like. And the re and the just reward for this was in 2014. This car came to within four uh, uh, came within four milliseconds of the 1,000 how of 1,000 horsepower all-wheel drive Tilton Evo. And um, uh, Suzuki-san is a part-time driver. Now that really just shows you what you've got at your fingertips, and in particular in the race car engineering article. I'm going to, go, I'm going to be going into this in some, in some depth because um, the way that I thought that Andrew tied the vehicle, simulation, uh, uh, the vehicle simulation data that he was getting out of chassis sim to what he was doing with the CFT, I thought was really, really clever. However, you can read more about that in the race car engineering article. The other thing to talk about is that, and this is why this has been such a great, uh, great case study, is that with chassis when you tie together something like chassis sim and cfd you can really start to resolve some pretty fundamental questions of um, what you do with the car in particular how much downforce do you run do you run now i've spoken to i've spoken about this in length in a couple of other chassis sim tutorials but one of chassis sim's uh, crown jewels is the tire force modeling being able to back out what the tire looks like from race data and this is an ex and this is what a World Time Attack Challenge um, uh, um, slick looks uh, uh, looks like. Now, the great thing about a figure like this is it's going to tell you the downforce you need to run. Now, you will notice here that I've blanked out the loads. That has been deliberate. That was actually a direct request from uh, uh, that was a direct request um, from Andrew because the thing about it is this is I mean this data is and the reason he asked uh, uh, he asked uh, me to blank, blank this out is this data is gold because this will tell you where you need to focus your CFD efforts on and when's that point of going, yeah, you know what? We've stepped um, to, uh, uh, we've stepped over um, uh, to, uh, too much. So this way, you know whether you've got a circuit like Eastern Creek, which is a big downfall circuit, or maybe you've got a much, um, uh, say, if you're running on a much more flowing, uh, uh, a much more flowing circuit, for example, the um, uh, the circuit de Gilles Villeneuve at uh, Montreal, where you've got some very very long straights, this will allow you to really really nail down where to put your C uh, CFD efforts. And quite frankly, this is gold. And I and I will go into this in more numerical depth in my race car engineering article. Some things to take away from. As we start, as we stated, World Time Attack Challenge is a category with complete technical freedom, and. Look, I'm not saying that this um, category is a technical uh, is a technical nirvana. No category in this sport is a uh, no category in this sport is a nirvana. And to, for me to profess it as such would be a complete pol uh, would be a complete Pollyanna attitude. However, it does have significant technical freedom, and all I can say is hallelujah. Um, now, the great thing about it is it's been a perfect case study of how to combine both CFD and vehicle simulation together. And I really cannot stress that point enough. I mean, it can do the basics for you, like define your attitudes and L&D targets. 
But here's the thing. Combining this with simulator data really narrows down where to put your CFD and where to put your CFD resources. And in a category like this, you are completely bonkers. And I mean completely bonkers, bark raving mad if you're not using um, two tools um, uh, such as this. But you know what? Don't take my word for it. If you are competing in World Time Attack Challenge or you're thinking about competing in World Time Attack Challenge, go to the Chassis Sim, uh, go to the Chassis Sim website, go to our online simulation, download it, um, take one of um, the, uh, take, I would start on the GT3 model and just start uh, on the GT3 LP560 template and start cranking up the down, uh, and start cranking up the downforce and run some what if um, uh, scenarios. Eastern Creek is one of the default circuits, so um, knock yourselves out, and we will catch you in the next Chassis Sim tutorial.